So let's start the solution video off by looking through all of the incorrect implementations of the queue. And then we'll see how we actually caught all of the bugs. So the first queue has an error where you end queue, and it only stores integers up to 2 to the 16th. And that's roughly 32,000. So when you enqueue things, it just silently wraps it back around to zero if you go over that. The second queue silently fails to create queues with more than 15 elements. So in the initializer, if, this, if the max size is greater than 15, then it just sets it to 15 and doesn't tell you about it at all. The third queue is a little tricky. It implements the empty method by trying to dequeue an element and checking if the dequeue is none. If it is, then it returns true. If it isn't, then it returns false. And because the empty method changes the state of the queue when it shouldn't, this is going to cause buggy behavior. The fourth queue has a bug in the dequeue method. When you try to dequeue from an empty queue, it returns false, where it should, according to the specification, return none. The final queue just holds one less element than you tell it to hold. So it just decrements size max when you pass it in by one, and then stores that many elements instead of how many you told it to. So now let's try to catch all these bugs. The first queue can be caught by just trying to enqueue a value greater than 2 to the 16th and then dequeuing it and check that the value is correct. The second queue, you try to enqueue more than 15 elements, because remember that was the one that only stored 15 without telling you. So as soon as you go past 15, this assertion should fail. The third queue is a little bit trickier. We create a queue with two elements. Then we try to enqueue 10, which should succeed fine, and we check that. Then we assert that the queue is not empty, which it shouldn't be. But remember that this empty function checks that it's empty by trying to dequeue, which removes 10 from the queue. Now, when we try to dequeue a second time, now the queue is empty. So it's not going to return 10. It's going to return none. So this assertion is going to fail. The fourth queue returns false instead of none when you try to dequeue from an empty queue. So to test this, we instantiate a two element queue and we try to immediately dequeue from that empty queue. And we should get none, which is what we're checking, but instead we get false, so this assertion will fail. Now, the final queue just holds one less item than intended, so we create a two element queue and we try to enqueue two elements, and this will fail for the second since this queue will only hold one element, not two. So this second attempt will fail. Okay, I hope you enjoyed catching all those bugs. This is something that comes up fairly frequently when you have to do black box testing when you don't actually uh, know the code that you're running against. You don't have access to it. So we'll talk a bit more about that in unit two, and I hope to see you there. Thanks.